Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Without further ado, we're gonna get back into five minute games. We're on level four building habits. So we have our openings. We've made some slight changes to a few lines, which means we do play. Um, for example, we play the Re Lopez. We don't just play this, um, this you know, four knights kind of setup. Playing the Re Lopez with white, trying to keep more pieces on the board, looking for uh, color complexes and a lot about weak pawns and imbalances like bishop against knight and especially end games. You got a big focus on end games, and check mating patterns, and making sure we have all the techniques down. In level four, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we get into today. Let's get the first game underway. Okay, uh, we got an eighteen thirty. We'll start with e four as always. Not going to be changing that habit. Okay, knight f three, and this might be where. Oh, I was going to say might be where we see the Ray Lopez, but um, d six. So whenever we see d six, uh, we're just going to take the, the center with d four. Take the full center. And I, in fact, I just talked about this five seconds ago. I said, today we're going to be focusing on weak pawns, color complexes, bishop against knight. Our opponent just did something. He just made a weakness on d5. It might not look like much, but right there, right there is a, a juicy, juicy weakness. So I'm going to make a move that we might not, uh, we might not usually play. And I'm going to do it because I want all my pieces to focus on this square. So my bishop's going to go to c4. My knight's going to go to f4. And my entire game plan is going to be about this square right here. And I'm going to castle. And we're going to go from there. Here we go. So my knight, you know, could go back to f3, of course, after I was attacked. Definitely, a, definitely a fine move. but. I chose to reroute it here on purpose to try to, to try to show you guys um, a thing or two about uh, the color complexes that that we're looking at today. Okay, so um, knight goes there. I'm gonna make uh, an interesting move. I'm gonna play bishop here, and the reason I'm doing that is because his bishop can directly control the uh, the d5 square. So I'm going to look to trade that off, and that will in turn give me better control of that square. So it's finally time to occupy Wall Street. Let's jump in. Look at that. We've got a beautiful control here. I think there's a good chance he even misses this tactic. There we go. I played a good move. But look at this. His knight is there. We can always kick his knight out. That's not a permanent square. My knight can't be kicked out by any pawns, and it's clamping down on the entire position. So let's just uh, keep developing. Of course, we got our h3 to throw in. You know, we got our pieces to develop. Bring a rook to the middle. We haven't done much in the way of attacking, like you know, pretty serious attacks on on our opponent's king. But we're just staying uh, staying pretty solid at the moment. Staying pretty solid at the moment. Okay, let's let's go back here for the moment. It's pretty obvious what his next move is. Uh, I am going to play h3. This isn't necessarily the best way to react to an attack, but I do think it's a good one. All right, now he's got all these pawns on dark squares. This pawn is a backwards pawn. This pawn is a backwards pawn. I'm going to choose to do this because I think after this move, f3, what you guys are going to notice is that my opponent doesn't have any attack. This doesn't do anything. This open file is well defended by the pawns here. Meanwhile, I still have this knight against bishop here. All his pawns are on dark squares. I've got this knight just dictating the entire game. So this should be a pretty easy game for me to win because of this knight from earlier and because of the color complexes that I've been talking about. Look at, I mean, what, what's this move? Is he going to play g4? Of course not. I mean, it's just irrelevant. So now, maybe I, you know, double up the rooks, for example. Maybe even triple. Put everything on this pawn here. 
Look at all these nice squares my knight can jump into. Knight e3, knight g4, knight f5. I mean, okay, here's a, here's a tactic. I, it's positions like this, I, I cry a little bit inside. Because this is a tactic, I have to do it. I mean, it wins material. It's a fork. But my knight is so, it's so nice. Like, I, he doesn't even deserve to touch my knight. He doesn't even deserve to have it. And what are we going to do? We're going to go right back to that backwards pawn. And we're going to put the rook in there now. Now we're going to double up. Poor knight. I mean, that was just a beautiful, beautiful knight. So now we've reached the final stage of the game, which is more of the conversion. So we are going to have to open something up. Why? Rooks need something. Uh, you know, they need a file they can penetrate. <clears throat> so I'm just going to create this bayonet here. B4, looking to take, and then boom, we have our open file. Right? But it was all about the, the knight and bishop, honestly. It was all about the knight and bishop. Okay, let's... Maybe queen here. I, I'm just going to stick to something something that makes sense, which is trade pieces went ahead. And use the open file. Try to infiltrate. We'll see what we can do here. Hey, Photon. Hey, Photon. So, again, I'm going to stick with uh, some of my rules here. You know, he's got a dark square bishop. His dark square pawns are not going to be too impressive. You know, push pawns like that. Maybe get my queen involved. At what point are you allowed to resign? I would say after this. I would say after this. But I think this is going to be the last uh, habits level. Probably aiming for something like around 2,000 ELO from this. Uh, or maybe just under. Something like that. Okay, he goes here. He's actually not threatening A4. Um, because his bishop's hanging. But nevertheless, he's letting me penetrate here with queen d6 check. Queen d6 check. That's a pawn for me. Yep, exactly, Lucas. D6, pawn. Okay, let's maybe play. I mean, at this point, there's probably a lot of decent moves. I'm trying to think what makes the most sense. Centralizing moves, pushing pawns. I think he could consider taking this now, but um, let, me, let me play a, a safe move. Let me play a safe move. I'm just going to take my king and put it out of the way. It's not going to get checked. It's not going to be any... Any concerns about that king? Just a nice, a nice safe move. There was probably better moves here. Maybe a5 is better. Queen here is better. So, so many moves probably better than what I just played, but I like it because it's safe. I like it because it's safe. Oh man, this guy wants to be banned. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to time him out for a very, very, very long time. I'm not gonna give him the privilege of being banned. I will time him out for a couple years. Okay, uh, queen's under attack. Let's uh, let's go back here. Okay, he's got some some defensive uh, some resilience here from the guy. Do you try to flag now or not? No, no, no. Definitely don't try to flag. If I could trade queens, I would be psyched about that. I would be psyched about that. Okay. He's coming down here for a check. He's coming down here for a check. I see what he's up to, guys, and I like it. It's exactly how you should play if you're playing with the black pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably stack these guys together. You have to look at what he's intending afterwards. So he's maybe intending here and a check down there. So you either stack these guys up so you can block these checks or you move the king out of the way again. Now that the bishop can't go there, I would actually say maybe this is the, the dangerous diagonal. If I go something like this, and he goes queen f4. You just have to watch out for some sort of draw, like where he checks you <clears throat> nonstop. Jeremiah, thanks for the uh, two months. Yeah, check out the VODs, man. Math of Penguin as well. Gifna Aries. It's a lot, Matt. A5 opener up. Not a bad idea, but I would say a little bit of a... Uh, Bit of a strange move trying to keep it a little simpler trying to keep it a little simpler and boom he's in there he's threatening some checks the most annoying check though is always going to be this one the back rank check just because if you're covering the back rank you can always avoid the checks by going here and now if i wanted to make a pre-move i would pre-move this why it's a defended square it's a check and would you look at that even get a queen trade so now i'm going to be 
uh, probably looking to do a lot of pre-moves. Let's see if I can. So what I would do is I would put this here. Now I can pre-move. Once this rook is here, there's nothing he can do in this position as long as I stay on light squares. He, he doesn't have any pawns that are you know extremely dangerous for him to pre-move. So for example, I would be able to do something like this. And as long as I stay on light squares every single time, right? I can pre-move this. I can hopefully take this pawn. Let me just pre-move that. Hopefully take this pawn. Let's pre-move this. That's a safer pre-move. Okay, and let's stay on light squares. Let's go here. Let's, I, I assume he's going to take my pawn. Okay, let's go here. Let's pre-move that. Let's pre-move another light square. He's doing a really good job, honestly. Pre-move, 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 pre-move. Here I wouldn't pre-move. I would sort of wait and see if he's going to queen or not. Yeah, like that. Then I would go like this. And again, I'm going to have to try to stay on light squares. 0.8 seconds. Probably not the favorite to, to checkmate here. But if we stay in light squares, we have a chance. GG. He played well. I think he deserved that win. Why did he play well? I thought he played the time scramble super, super well. Um, as black, look what he did here. He brought his bishop around to cover this pawn and then put it here. Super smart by him. So if I was if I was playing the game fully, I would be I would like probably sacrifice this and push this pawn. Um, but I really like what he did here. Still, we had a chance, basically by pre-moving only on light squares. That's all you want to do, like. Stick the light squares, pre-move. Um, even here, when we had the rook like this, you know, you could make <laughs> nearly, you know, a hundred pre-moves or something just by uh, just by staying on light squares in your own territory, right? Because there's not a, not a single thing that he could really do. Not a single thing he could do. Did lose, so we are going to analyze mostly because I want to uh, highlight a few more points about this. Uh, this knight and bishop. I think it's super important. Okay, so am I, you know, am I saying this is like the best move? I'm not necessarily sure. There might be better moves than 92, but it's definitely the move I like the most because it has a very clear plan, which is everything on d5. Right. <clears throat> Okay, and again, this move, not the best, for sure not the best move, but I had a clear plan that any one of his pieces, which can deal with this square, is something we want to trade off. Okay, and now I've like permanently occupied d5, it's mine, and look how bad his bishop is, all because of these two moves from earlier in the game. It's all about the light squares, and I actually do want to play bishop takes knight in general. But what I did was I waited for him to put all his pawns on dark squares, and then I decided to take. Right? And look at this position. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. <laughs> he, he's got no attack. He's got no bishop. Right? It's beautiful position. Am I up any material here? Nothing. But it's plus two. Plus two. A, a commanding advantage. Okay, so from here, all I would do is... Pretty much the same moves that I did after I won the material. If I had the knight on the board, or triple up the rooks. Triple up the rooks and queen, rather. That's what I was going to do. But knight against bishop. So if you see your opponent make these weaknesses in the opening, I would play towards them immediately. Right? c5, and let's just look at the square. Immediately reroute. Put everything on that, that square. Am I supposed to immediately attack this pawn? That might be tempting for some people, like knight b5, right? The thing about knight b5 is like they go a6, and you can't take it right away. So you're, you're jumping the gun. You're trying to be way, way too quick. Whenever your opponent has a weak pawn, usually what you do is you don't just attack the pawn, you control the square first. So you control the square in front of the pawn, which means the pawn has to stay there as a weakness, so you fix it as a weakness. And then, later on in the game, you start attacking it. But if you start attacking it right at the beginning, not only will it probably be well defended, but it could even move up, You'll be chased away. 
Control the square in front of it first, and then attack it later. It'll it'll be sitting there the whole game. You don't have to be in a rush to take it. Let's get the next game on. That was a really good game to start off, because I'm I'm very happy that we got to got to see a game like that with knight against bishop. That's one of the one of the things we're definitely focusing on in, uh, in level four. Knights against bishops, imbalances. What positions is a knight better than a bishop? You guys just saw it. Very close. Pawns all locked on the same color as this bishop. That was a, a fantastic uh, game for white. Or fantastic game to have the knight in, that's for sure. Okay, d4. Um, I think we talked about playing the Nimzo. So these are, these are the, the Nimzo moves. However, there's one thing that will happen to you. When you're when you're playing against uh, people that are either gonna play like into Nimzo type of positions, or they'll play these two moves and then they'll play Bishop F4, right? And they'll turn it back into a London. So I have to see what they do because sometimes they can they can be a little tricky with uh, their move order, or sometimes they can play a very <laughs> a timid move like that. Okay, well, let's go for our setup. Our setup, whether we can play this move or not, um, usually involves this d6, knight d7. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do something very similar. But definitely when you play the move e6, you're already committing your bishop there. So that's the whole point of the opening in the Nimzo. It's like your bishop's definitely going there and not there. So uh, we've got this setup. Like I said, you usually go um, for something pretty timid like this. Yeah, low t. Yeah, c3 is definitely, definitely a little low t. Let's castle. Okay, and he goes here, he wants to play e4. Um, I'm just gonna let it happen. I'm just gonna let it happen. Oh man, guys, the, the, oof, the testosterone is really lacking here. Jeez. Oh, oh man. Sorry, I just need a moment. <laughs> I just need, a, just need a moment to collect myself. Oof. That is a, this is a really solid guy. This is a really solid guy. Okay, so I'm going to continue with my setup. Uh, the knights usually support each other, c5, and then the pawns like this. So this is a setup that uh, I've talked about, but I've never actually gotten a chance to show you guys. So I'm happy we get to look at it here. Where do the rooks go in this position? Can anyone help me out with that? I'm just going to move my queen here in the meantime. These are the, the squares we're going to utilize for those pieces pretty much every game. That, that we go for this setup. But where do the rooks want to go? Mustache etiquette, si, senor. Okay, I'm definitely seeing a lot of c8s. I fully agree. We need a rook on c8. Why? There's pawn tension here, which means it's very, very likely that a c file gets open. Okay. Um, and usually, uh, what I would go with after after c8, a lot of people saying d8, my preference is, is actually to play rook e8. Um, the reason being that if I take and he takes with the e pawn, well, then the e file will be open. Plus, at some point in this game, I also might want to push uh, move uh, e5, and I want to support that. So rook e8, rook c8 would be what I would do. I'm just going to go ahead and play my h6. And he took. So now I have an option. What do you guys think? There's literally so many ways to take this pawn. Which one do you guys like? I think there's a, I think there's a very clear best move here. Horsey takes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Horsey takes. Stephen Gray. Etiquette bits. Thanks for the 1,000. We are going to take with the knight. Now, we could take with you know either pawn. First of all, I would say this pawn is probably the worst. It, yeah, I don't know. It, does, it keeps things blocked up. Uh, no move here would be a blunder or anything. Knight there not only makes a threat, but we just talked about how you know we have this open file. So obviously, we want to take with a piece so it's actually open. And our opponent plays c4. I mean, this is how you deal with, with guys that don't have any testosterone. Look at the... I mean, look at these blasting moves out as if it's all prepared. Okay, let's... Take the material. Okay. Got to push some pawns here. What do we want to do? Um, after we uh, win material, we want to trade. We want to trade, 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 trade. So um, 
I'd love to get a queen trade. I like to trade any pieces, any pawns. Always trade. Okay, now the position has clarified. We have an open file here, and we also have an open file here, which means I would probably take this moment to shift my rook over. I also think bishop takes knight is not a terrible move. It is a trade, so I fully understand if you guys are bishop takes f3 guys. I don't like the idea of giving away the bishop like that sort of needlessly, but it is a trade, and we are at material, so I, I can fully understand something like that. Brings the rook over. Makes a lot of sense. What do we do? Bishop f8, 94. Uh, definitely looks like a, like a good suggestion. But I would, I would also say maybe a little bit advanced. Uh, I'm actually going to go for, for this. Not my favorite move, but I think a, a very understandable move as part of the habits. Rot material, we want to trade. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Next. Next. We want, we want more trades. Do we want to trade knight for knight here? No, we lose the game. That's a, that's a different trade. We don't want that one. That's one of the ones we don't want. That's a no. We want queens traded, though. That's for sure. I mean, I don't really have a, a clear plan here other than trade as many pieces as possible. That is the plan, basically. Okay, and he has a clear plan as well, which is <laughs> don't trade with that guy. <laughs> don't trade with that guy. Okay. Let's, uh, what do we want to do? Still want to trade with him. I'm not sure how to do it. Uh, trying to identify a way to, to offer a queen trade here. Queen here. Go back to where we were. E hum, thanks for the bits, man. So I'm going to take the approach of just being a ruthless trader in this game. I went queen d3 to trade. Now I'm going back. Uh, of course, I want to trade again. Come on, buddy. Come on, Mahesh. Big, big Mahesh. Oh, he's not trading. Okay. Let's double the rooks on an open file. That's never a plan that's gonna, gonna be too bad, right? Hey, hey, Mahesh. He's going for the fat mate, he is. We gotta watch out for Mahesh. No trades, he's doing a good job, what can I say? Let's go here, a nice little in-between move. At the very least, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to earn myself a trade. I'm trying to earn myself a trade. So at least it means like I'll be able to take some of these guys as soon as this pressure is relinquished. You could also say he's kind of high T because he doesn't want to trade queens, but the problem is he's only high T because he lost materials. So <laughs> I'm not sure if he is high T or not. Queen e5 is the dream move. Oh, we want to see that move. And look, we got a trade. You have a check. If he goes here, probably want to do another trade. So we got our trades. The only problem is <laughs> it was at the cost of the entire game. It was at the cost of the entire game. Yeah. We got our trades, though. Yay. Let's uh, save our rook. Flag time, yeah. Flag time for sure. That's a pre-move we can try. Maybe bishop here. Oh, Mahesh. That's all we can try, right? Queen there, queen there. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> got one and a half seconds and buddy! My hash stopped at GG. Okay, E4. We're going to play E5. C3. I don't think we've seen this move. This, this move look, looks a little bit new. There's D4 coming. Let's go Knight F6. Probably Knight C6. I mean, we're just playing, uh, just playing our usual setup. Our usual setup. However, I, I truly haven't seen a C3, D4. Like, I haven't seen this, this plan yet. 
D3 is a little low T, I, I will say. Our opponent does seem low T. A4, look at this guy. He doesn't play B4 and then A4. You guys see this? He's very tricky. Very tricky. He wants to play, exactly, Tommy. He wants to play B4 and A5. You can tell that our buddy over here is someone to look out for. So we're just going to play simply a6. We need to, we need to make uh, some space for our bishop. So we're going to do that. Okay, he castles. Let's castle. b4. Actually, you know what? Let's play this. Let's just, we're going to let him, you know, fully nut here. You guys, oh, he's, oh, he just can't believe it. He got to play a5 as well. Oh, and now bishop e3. Bishop e3. Trade. Sure. Sure. H6. Good habits. Okay. He's, he's, he's on the habits as well. Let's bring the rook. D5 people shy. I, I think we're definitely D5 bros. That's for sure. I do like the idea of supporting the pawn in the center. I mean, h6 is just a decent move all around. But yeah, I think we're definitely d5, bros. True, Vagilet, he did. He chased my bishop all the way back and then treated it. All right, for Sleazy McCheesy, he wants to play d5. Do we have the approval of the court? No, we're not developed yet, but I will play it next. There we go. All right, Sleazy, I got you. d5 played. And what comes next? I mean, usually after uh, d5, you take back with the, the knight. Something like queen up, rook over. Hey, Casey Ingram's back. The pleb sniper. <laughs> okay, he goes knight there. I mean, hopefully you guys don't need help with, uh, with this move. That is a pawn for us. And a trade. Free pawn, and we get to trade the bishop as well. That's just a bonus. Oh, and there's another free pawn. Oh my goodness, I get to trade more pieces and then take more pawns. This is, uh, this is my lucky day. This is my lucky day. So I'm going to be looking for trades now. I'm going to be a boring, boring trade guy. First of all, knight very offside. I think you should bring it back into the game. Uh, I don't mind this move here. Kind of like it. Watch this, uh, a lot of central pawns. Also watches the knight, which I am going to bring back into the game right now. Here we go. Here we go. Queen g3. What is buddy up to? What is buddy up to? Yeah, he does want knight f6. He's also threatening knight h6, but I would say both of those threats are very, very important to deal with. Queen lined up against king. He's doing that for a reason, guys. He's doing that for a reason. We got we to get king out of dodge. So of all these king moves, you never choose the, the king move that goes towards the center when the, king, the queens are on the board. That's one thing. Um, h8, h7. Both moves look very good. I would say h7, still on this diagonal. There's definitely some some threats to still worry about. Um, I'm gonna choose h8. I'm not ne necessarily sure if I would be um, an advocate for h7 or h8 here, but I feel like h8 is off this diagonal as well, so feels like it's a little bit safer. That's just how it feels. Okay, let's finish development. Just get the rook to the middle of the board. There we go. Okay, he's doing some good stuff. He's attacking my pawn. Gotta defend it. There's no way around that. No way around that. Can't hate h8. True. True. All right. He's full sending over here. He's threatening f7. He's threatening f7. Um, f6. Got a lot of f6 suggestions. Scary. Rook f8 is probably a weirder move for people to play than f6. So I'm going to choose f6. Remember, this is the same guy that played uh, b4, a5, and just full, full netted. So we know that he's 
He's like a rook h5 guy. He's looking for knight takes h6. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. Knight takes h6. How are we going to deal with this? Now I want my king on h7. Exactly. <laughs> now I want my king on h7. Sheesh. There you go. Now you guys see the main difference between h8 and h7. h7 actually defends the h6 pawn, but generally king h7 is a lot more compact. Keeps everything well defended around the king. Okay, queen h4 is happening, and he's threatening it again. He's threatening it one more time. Knight takes h6, the guy doesn't stop. The guy doesn't, would queen f8 have worked? Well, if I play queen f8, I think he would do the same move. I think he would do the same move, right? Pretty sure. Call me Big Luke, I'd say h7 is, uh, is a better way to deal with it. Queen f8, yeah. Yep, we're guarding with the queen here. But he's coming in with the sack, remember. Sacrifices like that look very scary. He takes with check. King's got to move. Brutal. Tough, 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 tough. This wasn't it. I would agree. I would agree. He had knight takes f6. I, I think that was better. I think that was better. I guess let's pre-move this. We have 6.9 seconds. Nice. Nope. We get to uh, offer a trade. We get to offer a trade. The nice thing is if he doesn't trade, I think we go rook f8. I think he's kind of got a trade with us here. Now let's attack this knight. Maybe rook here? Can I pre-move that? Man, that's a really scary pre-move. <laughs> that's a really scary pre-move. He did mess it up pretty badly. Oh, it's a scary pre-move that worked out. Hey, Adrian, we did lose some rating. It's a scary pre-move that worked out. Yeah, C5 was scary, Irish. A few scary moves, knight h5. Whoa! Let's pre-move rook takes rook. Don't pre-move rook takes f6, because he's going to move the knight away. Let's pre-move all this stuff. Now, he's going to do something around here, which means we're probably going to have to move our king. In these situations, I usually recommend just moving your king a ton until you find some sort of safety. Okay, let's see if we can push this guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sack this. He might check me. He might play. Yeah, I'm just going to sack it. Let's just send this guy. <laughs> let's just send this guy. Let's send this guy. No, he's going to stop me. Hey, hey. Hey! Hey! No! <laughs> no! Let's have a look. Why are we looking at this game? Because we got absolutely blasted. Do you guys not remember? We got absolutely blasted on the king's side. Look! This was... Uh, this was... Uh, we won material, and then we got crushed. But I think this is uh, something that can absolutely happen in your games. Right? So let's say something like this. It's like minus two and a half, whatever, whatever. You bring the knight back in, they bring the queen over. Look, even the engine is like king h8, king h7. I don't know, man. You know, it's close, it's close. Rook f5. So here's where it starts to shift in the other direction. Here's where it starts to shift in the other direction. Every single one of his pieces is mobilized around my king. And none of my pieces are doing anything. 
None of my pieces are doing anything. So what should we have been doing? Well, I would say that in this position, something like king h7 would be slightly better, but I don't think it would ultimately change the outcome. Like, he's still going to do the exact same things. Maybe I'm a little bit closer in defending things, but barely, barely. So I think, I think the... I think the mistake, let's say, is from earlier. Mistakes from earlier. Um, would I go bishop takes knight? No, that, that wouldn't be my favorite move. I should probably start with either a knight takes pawn or just queen e7, rook d8 now, and just develop. It was the bishop takes knight in taking this pawn that was definitely the, the sent me down the wrong path, right? As you can see, literally a mistake. When you're, when you're trading pieces, taking pawns, telling you it's a mistake, that's probably a good sign. That's probably a good sign. So what would I say? I would say knight takes uh, there or just finish development. It's one thing we never really did in this game was queen e7, um, rook d8. We never finished development. And because of that, I was still finishing development here on move, what is this? 23. I'm finishing development and he's going for mate. Right, so it's not a good sign when your opponent's going for checkmate against you and you're still completing development. We haven't really faced this opening too much, but what do I always say? Hey, if the guy's not play, playing a pawn in the center, let's get a pawn in the center ourselves. At Chesspray, your hair gives me a semi. It says a bald, nude man. Understandable. Um... C4 has just been played. Um, I'm going to stick to a setup that we've used so far and employ it here, which is if this was a queen's gambit, e6, knight f6, bishop e7, castle. That's something we've done before, so let's try to do that. Here and castle. Okay, done. We're both, we're both happily castled. Now, we're going to put our bishop here, our knight here. Casey Ingram. Okay. Now, I'm not thinking about the position too much because all I know is he's doing fairly non-threatening moves. And I'm able to get my setup here. Let's get h6 in. Grams, thanks for the five subs, dude. Casey Ingram starting the sniping. Now, where do the rooks want to go? Well, a rook here with c5 makes a lot, a lot, a lot of sense. So here, probably queen here, and something like that. These, there's, with all the tension here, where are the uh, files that are going to be opening up? It's going to be right here. C and D, baby. C and D. Okay. Uh, he's actually got pretty much the same setup going on so uh, yeah i'm just gonna go here he's doing that let's bring the rook in and i might copy him because it's never a good idea to have your rook on the open file uh, bald nude man has just subbed with twitch prime you see guys you thought he was just a pleb trolling but in fact the semi that he received from my hair caused uh, an erection in his uh, in his wallet as well. Appreciate that, bald nude man. He's in here now. Got to have a username like that sub to the channel. That's for damn sure. Yeah, Jimster, queen not being on a file where there's a rook looking straight at it. <laughs> That's basically it. So I'm going to move it out of the way. Amon sees bald nude man and starts talking about erections, lol. Uh, no, I started talking about erections because he said my hair gave him a semi. You know what a semi is? A semi, for most people, is when, you know, your, your parts start to, you know, expand to a size uh, where, in your case, uh, you might call that fully erect uh, or throbbing. But for most of us, it's just called a semi. Um... Let's go after night here. I mean, let's just go for a trade. Let's just go for a trade. Okay, he's taken back. 
We're going to follow our basic habits. Knight in the middle of the board. If there's a central square available, we're going to use it. Knight there. If he takes, I'll take back. About tree fitty. Oh, I know we're on chess TV. I'm just talking about uh, um, semi trucks. There was a uh, an accident today where uh, there was a semi on the highway and it uh, caused a big traffic jam. Similar to the uh, to the very important uh, trade canal, which is currently blocked for robbing semi trucks. Um, okay, let's take back. That's right. That's right, uh, Victor. That's right, buddy. Why not take with the rook? Um, I mean, I <laughs> I got a few reasons, but maybe because the 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 pawn guards the knight, we could start start with that one. Okay, very understandable move. Um, let's take it back. Okay, I'm expecting a capture, which we're going to take back. Okay, here, we got to move our queen. I'm going to choose to go here so that maybe I can get on this diagonal. That's an idea. This is bishop actually super annoying. I would normally like to play rook d7 there. Okay, and he's pushed. And he's pushed. What do you think Buddy is threatening here, guys? What is Buddy threatening? He wants to take on G7. Like, he is ready to explode. He's ready to take this. Uh, it's not a full battery. If the queen was in front, it'd be a full uh, battery. So we call this uh, like a semi, like a semi battery uh, on the G7 pawn. If it was full, the queen would be in front. So uh, you guys are telling me f6. I've uh, fallen for that one before. Uh, I've fallen for f6 from the chat before. The good thing is our opponent's disconnected. So when your opponent disconnects, all you need to do is just... Oh, he's back. Damn it. Damn it. You never play f6 and you always play bishop f8. This has to be the perfect example of that phrase. <laughs> it just has to be. <laughs> this is awesome. We get to we get to play bishop f8. We get to play rook takes pawn. F6 was bad last game, which means it's probably not going to be good in any game in the future ever. Okay, he goes e3. Now, got to start using some of my pieces here. Got to start using some of my pieces. This guy's playing uh, well, mate, China. 100%. 100%. Let's just move this bishop while we actually think of a plan. What do we want to do here? Maybe threaten this pawn. Maybe activate this queen over here. Let's, let's just make a queen move. I'm sort of looking to inch my way closer to the, uh, the king side. But Ah, great move by Buddy. A great move by Buddy. He's got a threat here. Bishop e6. No, 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 we can't, we can't let that happen. Hey, King H8 or King H7, guys. We played King H8 last game, it was kind of bad. It has to be King H7 from now on. Probably for the rest of our lives. King H7, always. Oh, he goes Bishop, he goes Bishop there anyway. Well, I only have one safe square, as you can see. I literally only have one safe square. It's a good thing our King's on H7. Oh, he's going back. Oh, let's go here. This dude won't leave me be. This dude won't leave me be. So he has a draw? No. I Did he offer one? I didn't see it. 
Well, we'll see what he does. Uh, bishop here. Okay. Let's go rook here. Dude, this guy, this guy won't stop. Get the hell off me, bro. Get the hell off me. Oh my goodness. He wants to trade now as well. Jeez. This is the dude. Get the hell off me. Look at my rook. I've been look I'm on h5. What the hell am I doing here? This is terrible. Oh, okay. Jeez, okay. We Oh my goodness. Can I get a pre-move? God damn, can I get one pre-move in this whole game? Oh no. Oh, oh no. A4. I, this, no, no, no. This guy is uh, playing super, super well. Let's pre move that. Oh, okay. Huh. Huh. Okay, now I'm going to say full, full send. Dude, get this guy off me. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> get this guy off me. I'm just making the same moves back and forth. <laughs> I haven't made a single different move. Okay. <laughs> I died. I made the same move back and forth. All right, we got e4. Guys, we got the white pieces now. He's not taking the center. So you guys know what the habits tell you to do. Pawns in the middle, you know, knights, simple, simple setup. Not going to overthink. Castle, that rookie one energy. That's, yeah, let's hit that guy, h3. You know, you know the drill. Okay, he's developing. We're developing and protecting. Okay, he's playing e5. And what have I said? We do not like moves like d5. We want to try to keep the game open. Keep the game open. So, reach an important position. Um, basically, if we play rook d1, then we're going to lose our dark square bishop. In this position, what is my more important bishop? 100% is definitely the dark square bishop. If I lose that, this guy becomes super, super strong. So, I'm going to take knight e2. Knight e2 is a reasonable move, but it's kind of a backwards move. I, I'm not sure that's the type of stuff I want to start recommending. <laughs> so let's go rook d1. Okay, let's go rook e1. And I think we're chilling. We finished our development at least. Can't complain. Can't complain. Here we go. Okay, so we have an important choice to make. After takes, takes, rook takes. Right? Our opponent has our his bishop lined up against our rook. Is there a winning tactic for him there? Is that a pawn for us? Yes or no? Yes or no? You just have to look at all the squares the knight can move to and identify if any of them are truly scary. Here can be, well, can be probably the most dangerous move. Knight h5 doesn't really threaten anything. Knight d5 can be taken. Knight d7 doesn't really threaten anything. Yes, take with the bishop easy, says so crispy. Take with the bishop easy. I like the I like the energy behind that. My wife says I can't sub tier three, but I can get a chest bra tattoo. Interesting. Not sure what to make of that. It sounds like 
Sounds like that's a overall W. I think that's a W. Rook's attacked. We're going to move back. Only move, right? Queen e2. Good move by him. Um, at this point, I feel like I would probably save the bishop. If he's not going to take it, I'll keep it. I like the bishop. And maybe I start to think about f4 and e5. Start to push him away. Start to push him away. It from three or IT from three? Thanks, uh, thanks, dude. I'm happy to hear that. Immediate success. Here we go. F4, E5. We're pushing, pushing pawns in the center. Uh, I might double my rooks on the open file. That's always something we we try to do. Knight into a central square. Now I have one available. Casey Ingram is nonstop, man. Four gifted subs in a row. On top of everything today. Casey Ingram. Cheers. Okay, goes knight there. I think I'm going to put that knight in the middle. Why? Oh, that's another. Uh, that's another trade. That's another trade. Okay, capture towards the middle. Queen h4 threat my pawn. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Queen f2. It guards the pawn and oh, a queen trade. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. I'm up a pawn here, so any trade is a good trade. Ah, he's not gonna. He's not gonna go for it. He's not gonna go for it. So, what am I probably gonna do here? Um, I'm gonna go for the the other classic plan of doubling the rooks on an open file. Fifteen thousand one hundred and fifty-one subs. Wow, got that palindrome sub number. Let's go. And let's play rook d1. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Queen f5. Now, we do have the open file. Great news. We also have an outpost. That's right. When you're playing knights against bishops, you want to look for squares where no pawns can attack you and you're supported by your own pawn. That's a beautiful square here. An outpost. And would you look at that? I'm even attacking the queen as well. Okay, he goes here. Now, geez, look at the cojones on this guy. He's saying there's no good squares for my knight to go. The same, the same thing that we said uh, about his knight earlier. And honestly, I think he might be right. I think he might be right. None of these uh, squares look particularly effective. Right? Knight takes f7, there's queen takes. It doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite work. So, let's put the queen in the middle of the board. Double up the pressure on the open file. That was a hilarious sound bite. Okay. <laughs> My stream is effing. I'm seeing that. The frames. The frames are disappearing today. <laughs> Stream is lagging a bit. I think a bit is an understatement. I can't believe uh, some of the lads are still here. I can't believe we're still out here. I'm coming at you in uh I'm coming at you in one pixel right now. A sing a singular p habit, a singular pixel. Canadian internet is never good. This is this is true. 
Yeah, yeah, Mixologist. There's no Knight F7. By the way, Mixologist, where's your blonde, buddy? We all want to see it. Apparently, you've done it a while ago. You can hear me. We back. Yeah, I know. It's just the annoying stutters, eh? The annoying stutters. We're ready for the next slide. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Everyone in here is a sub. Yep, definitely. It's very easy to tell the non-subs. Green Chili 2-step, thanks for the resub. Noble Steed, tier 3 for 8 months. We gotta get Noble Steed in here. Sounds like he's got an ex-wife now, based on that tier 3 sub. Or he has a chest brow tattoo as well. But thank you. Thank you very much. Knight takes F7. That's a very, very typical uh, tactic. Ah, oh, he's giving me that for free. He's giving me that for free. What are we going to do? We're going to rook there. And you know what? I think we can pre-move it. Check. Let's move the knight and make a queen. Check. Check. And check. Mate. We are back momentarily, but I'm not sure how long it's going to last. Let's see what happens if I start another game. <laughs> but I'm not optimistic here. Not optimistic here. Okay, maybe we get a PFT. That that might bring the um that might bring the internet back. <laughs> okay. The PFT guys. The PFT is gonna bring us back. The PFT. That's all we got, guys. PFT. Uh maybe that maybe that's what we needed. I think we're dropping again. Or are we back? I can't tell. I think we're dropping again, but we got a PFT in there for the for the boys. <laughs> Let's uh bring the rook to the middle. Everyone refresh. I don't know if that's uh, I, I can't tell. I think it's just going to be dropping again. But Seems okay at the moment. Okay. Here, I don't know. Bishop there, ninety four. We got a few, a few ideas. No drops yet. Oh, I think there was a drop. <laughs> Let's trade pieces. We want to trade everything. Okay. Just narrate the moves when it drops. Yeah. So everyone can follow along. So everyone can follow along. Well, we, we won the piece with uh, Queen A4. This is great. It's a good, uh, good sign. It's true. We might, this might be the, the future of streaming. Just no, I'll go back to the no cam days. Oh, he takes. Let's uh, take while developing our bishop and attacking the queen. Looks like a good habit. Well, we're just trying to see if uh, somehow I can I can use the the PFT to bring bring our stream back to life. To bring our stream back to life. Now, if we bring the rook into the middle. Unfortunately, Rook there has uh, some pretty serious poison. Let's go for more trades. Why not take with the knight and fork the Rook and Queen earlier? Listen, unfortunately, you could be talking about a game, you know, 
from an hour ago. Like, I don't know what slide you're on. I don't even know if, uh, you know, the chat's real right now. I don't even know if the chat's real. I could be responding to comments from yesterday. Chess brought NFT. Imagine a chess brought NFT of the PFT. That would be something. <laughs> My time is 317. Thanks, Ben Thornham. When I read that, it was at 314. It's good to know. We're syncing up. We're syncing up. Dude, VTG, Casey Ingram, <laughs> Ban Ban, Labubush, also in here with a sub. Lots of gifts to us. Vertica with the bits, Grams, VTG, Casey Ingram. Very, very uh, appreciated, guys. These are, these are uh, lag gift subs, so they, they mean even more. They mean even more. Okay, let's go for all the trades, right? Go for all the trades. Ah, he doesn't want them. Okay, let's play H3. Habits, habits. More trades. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, we still want to do some trades here, although it's it's tough to trade for those. Let's protect the knight. Hey, he, he's following the habits. That's good. That's good. Hey, big quadro. Kaysinger with another gifted sub, and then seven month three sub from Piquadro. Thank you, buddy. Oh man, Suzuki, you're you're pretty far behind then, eh? We're just ganging up on this pawn, looking to take it again. I'm just going for trades. I'm just going for trades here. Mm-hmm. See a five card draw. See ya, buddy. Okay. He's doing the right thing. I'm going to go back and look for another trade. And he's keeping pieces on. This guy is annoying. This guy is annoying. Let's make a pawn move. Playing a good game for sure. Make another pawn move. Who knows what, what we're supposed to do here? Yeah, we're just we're just pushing, pushing, pushing. Okay, he's <laughs> he's stopped me now. He's stopped me now. Nope, there's another one. Uh, we had a good run. So a little baby drop there. I think I think we just no there no we're back to the drops. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it was too good to be true. It was too good to be true. Small F. Yeah. Small F. Really I'm really, really uh, impressed by uh this guy's play down a piece, by the way. Really, really impressed. He's avoiding trades. Trying to put my pieces in the middle here. We are dropping out here. Yeah. 
yeah, this is this is rough. Small F. Yeah, but you know, like even even if it's like a small drop or something, like I hate streaming anything that's that's not high quality, and uh, I definitely don't enjoy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna have a good time streaming if I'm thinking about drops the whole time. Um, let's bring the queen in. He's playing super well, like, so impressed by this guy. So impressed. See ya, Irish. We got a nice little, nice little tactic here. We get to involve a sacrifice with an HG5. The audience is high quality. Okay. I respect a comment like that. Anytime we see that, we usually bring the knight out. Interesting. Interesting. A3. Not used to that move. Not used to that move. Let's go H6. I don't think this position should be that confusing. We've, you know, we've been here before. We've been here before. Okay, an D5. We're going to take. Why are we going to take? Because we've actually had this exact same game before. We're going to take in the middle. And we're going to look for trades. And I think we just have a slightly better pawn structure. If his pawn was here, it'd be very, very even. But with the pawn there, double pawns, I think we're, I think we're happy here. Hey, what's Buddy up to? What's Buddy up to? Let's find out. I'm going to play f5 to start. And then where does this rook want to go? It wants to go here. We're probably going to be pushing these two pawns. So let's play queen f6 to defend that. And we're going to play rook e8, maybe king h7, maybe double the rooks. But we're just going to push these pawns with the support of our rooks behind it. If the f file could open up, that'd be great. Why? Bishop here. Queen here, rook there. They're all looking at the exact same pawn, basically. Here we go. Finish the development. Probably going to play e4 next. Well, I said I was probably going to play e4 next. Now it's an option. But, you know, after a move like e4, technically the position does close up a little bit. I could totally understand uh, um, pawn takes pawn here. But like I said, my plan was to play e4, so I am going to continue with that. He doesn't close it up, he decides to take it, which means we can double the rooks on the open file, and hopefully that should be enough to, to get a winning position. So yeah, this move I pretty much can pre-move. Yeah, rook, rook here. The channel pushed you to making a chess.com account. Awesome. Did the channel push you to use our affiliate code when you made that account? Uh, rook d1. Okay, let's uh, invade with the rooks. Rookie one possible here. Uh, I may have some tricks available with some bishop f2, but uh, for now, he's he's hinting at something like this. I don't think it's a threat right now, but it might be a threat soon. May as well play the move a6. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I'm going to take it. Oh, Bequadro, five subs. Thank you, buddy. We're we're battling the the connection here. We're we're barely surviving. The subs keep the stream going. Every sub is 
goes towards well it goes toward the uh uh the guy who's going to be fixing our internet for sure we can hire a better technician with more subs <laughs> thank you big quadro Tommy says, my son also enjoys the stream, but now he dyes his hair odd colors and takes Capri Sun shots while saying, yeah, buddy. This is like where the chess stream needs like a disclaimer. We're not responsible for, you know, what happens to you after watching. E5. Okay, buddy, a trade. Okay, a trade. Let's let's go three strong on the E file. Three strong on the E file. Lewis Cruiser got sniped by Casey Ingram. Gotcha, buddy. Casey Ingram is uh, getting people that are sub for twenty two months. That's not a good sign for uh, our buddy Lewis. Bishop there. We do have a uh, a fork. Don't know if it's necessarily winning, but. Definitely, uh, definitely a move we're going to try out. And if he takes, well, I think we just do it again. <laughs> I think we can just do it again. So he plays a great move. He plays a great move. Takes this way to stop that. Okay, let's attack that bishop. I suppose I could go here or here. I'm not sure which one is better. Um, just make that, make that threat. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a brilliant move, unfortunately. Ooh, a trade. You don't have to tell me twice. I don't think that's a good move from him at all. Check. Thunderbird, thanks for the nine months. Let's give another check. Let's trade. And now we're in a rook end game. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Okay, rook end game. We're going to take this pawn. And we're never going to let him take any of these pawns. So I put my rook here and I put my pawn here. And you see how everything basically defends each other. It's true. Uh, all I did was trade pieces this game. I didn't do... Uh, I didn't. I, I had a tactic that was almost going to work, but um, okay, let's bring our king in the middle of the board. He's doing some funky stuff over here. I respect him. I respect him. If he goes here, what am I going to do? I'm going to go here. Okay. It's time to start pushing these pawns. Just pick one and push it. I'm going to pick the one that's furthest away from the king. It's usually what you want to do. Okay, he stopped it. Let's defend and go forward and maybe just repeat that pattern. I know he can't trade rooks with me. I know he can't trade rooks with me. Okay, I'm just basically doing, you know, going one by one by one. The nice thing about three pawns is that they're very easy to, to push with one another. Like, as long as you get this, um, this V formation, they're very, very sturdy. They always protect um, one another. Check. Yeah, I usually say king to the middle, but in the interest of preserving our pawn and demonstrating that these guys can push on their own, let's uh, like this. I'll do two. I'm no, definitely really, really, really a hungry, bro. But we're going to make food after. I'm going to go home. Well, the streams go to 7 a.m. I mean, <laughs> this is breakfast. <laughs> um, so, like, just like stuff. Yeah, what I said earlier, like a um, few sauces, okay. simple onions. Thanks, man. Got some, uh, got some chicken wraps. Those are gonna be key. Those are gonna be key. Okay, so why did I say that the pawns advance very easily? You push one, you push the other, and I'm just looking to recreate the V with the rook in front. So I just have like the exact same formation inching up the board. 
right? And it's just unstoppable. I, you know, I can push the other one again and do the exact same thing. Streaming till 7 a.m.? Oh, I was just commenting on uh, the fact that the streams often go till 5, 6, 7 a.m. And uh, it's only 7 p.m. right now. So <laughs> there's a very good chance that if I eat now, I'm going to be eating you know, at least one or two more times before I sleep. Like, for example, yesterday, the stream ended at 7 a.m. Okay, and you guys have seen, I've literally walked this creature up the board in the V formation, and there you go. We get a mate for that. Maxwell Moose, our buddy Maxwell. We want to push this. All right. We got a delayed PFT, bro. I'm telling you, Bishop E2. We always, you always get them. Let's see what he's going to play. Sounds good, Biquadro. And we got another PFT victim. Get him out of here. How many times have I won a night in this habit series? Like, it must be at least like 20 games or something that we just win a free night. Oh my goodness. 25 subs from Jason Cassidy. I'm talking about uh, subs making the stream function again. Jason Cassidy says, well, sounds like we're here for a good time and a long time. Thank you, Jason Cassidy. Let's get the Knights out. Holy cow. 25 subs. Say thank you, boys. Anyone just got one? You know who to thank. We had a lot of gifters, though. Casey Ingram, he's probably up around 25 today as well. We had Grams in here. VTG. I'm probably forgetting some names, but we've had a lot of gifters. Biquadro, I know, just uh, just donated uh, a whole bunch. Key Jr. Yeah, there's been a lot today. Norwega, thanks for the two months. Let's just develop. We're up a piece. Guys, PFTs are easy, easy clap. JPJP with the 100 bits. And Har84, thanks for the gifted sub. Let's castle. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to bring a rook right there. Where it's going to hurt. <laughs> where it's going to hurt. There you go, sir. Thanks, buddy. These look good. Uh... Like good memories. <laughs> Chicken wraps for the boys. Jeez. Mmm. Oh man. That's some good stuff. Look at him, he's out of here. Now, is the best move in this position bishop e2? No, it's not. No, it's not. But it always works. <laughs> it always works. Is this stream sponsored by Chicken Wraps? Oh, I'd love to be sponsored by Chicken Wraps. Elf here, I'm happy to hear that. Eating some Chicken Wraps, boys. Got some lettuce, cucumber, onions, um, chili flakes. Chicken, cheese, some good sauce. Let's go again. Yeah, I'm going to turn the music scroller off if this worked. Um, the songs are messed up. I feel like it had to do with the with the drop.
I'm not sure why. What kind of sauce is it? Well, I always put ketchup on, and I think it's ranch, like ranch and ketchup. Well, Buddy's not getting PFT'd with this move. That's what he's saying. However, we still get our center. We're still happy. We're still happy. Guys, the Rook wants to be here. We already know. Looking at the Queen. It's exactly what we want to do. Look at our development. We should, we should be very happy here. We should be very happy here. Let's go H3. Ranch and Ketchup is poor man's Thousand Island. Oh, dude. I'm putting Ranch and Ketchup before I'm putting Thousand Island. That's Hondo P. There we go. H3 for New York, Mike. So what's our next move? Probably some sort of central push because his king's still in the middle. We're going to try to open things up. Let's just go for it. His king's still in the middle. I want to open the position up. Let's take this. And I've got everything developed. I'm fully mobilized. Even got H3 in. So we've talked about the d6 square for knights before, but it is an anchored square. Pawn's protecting it and no pawn can attack it. So that's why I've played here. Um, I have a few squares that I can use. For example, knight takes e5, putting the knight there. That's another anchored square. But taking and putting the knight here, also very tempting. Why not trade the knights? Well, because of what I just said, I, I want to try to put my knight in there on d6. What's so important about h3? You gotta check out the habit series, buddy. That's one of the most important moves you'll ever play. Make sure you don't get back rank mated. Now, next, um, rooks seem very well placed. You know, doubling rooks on an open file is always my default plan. Um, I always suggest that if you don't know what to do and you have an open file to yourself, doubling rooks on it is often a very good idea, often. Why didn't he try knight c8? Um, he probably should have to get rid of my knight, but it was so bothersome that you guys see what happened. He, he just sacrificed for it right away. Knight b4, that would be great. Yeah, my opponent played knight b4. That'd be a good way to end the game.
Okay. Uh, take. Now that the rook is looking at this uh, this queen, I probably do want to move the queen off the D file. It makes no sense. Is bishop takes necessarily the best move? No, but I'm following like I'm following those rules of just trade pieces when you're ahead. It's not the best trade, but it's a trade. It's a trade. The, the trench coat lurk, yeah, it's great. I almost thought that was, uh, you know, no, no, like a, an Omid trench coat. When you can only see it approaching, Omid does like to do some trench yeah. coat. Who's that? I, we'll never know. We'll never know. Duke Duke 94 thanks for the three months. You can control my center. Be happy to. Prefer to control the centralized bank that handles your Twitch Prime sub. Nice move by Buddy. Um, let's continue to offer trades. Continue to offer trades. Has the card started? The main card starts here. He's got some interesting moves. He's ready to sack the house, I think. Okay. So, got to move my king. He has some uh, intentions here, right? He wants to coordinate on that square. So, his rook takes. Rook, knight takes. He wants to use the g2 square. Free rook. Well, I do, I do have to respond to check. That's a requirement. That's a requirement. So, I have a couple ideas. I could go here, right? Or I could go here. <laughs> Walking into the pin does... Does not seem smart at all. So one of these two moves, and like I said, King H2, a little bit more habitual, to be honest with you guys. So I'm going to play it. Going towards the, the center is something I think I even mentioned today not to do when the queens are on the board. So we're going to go to the side here. We're not going to take like this and blunder the, uh, um, and blunder the game away, but we are going to go to H2. King F1 is definitely the... The, you know, the better move, but I think King H2 makes the most sense. Following the habits. Okay. He did create pretty uh, decent counterplay, yeah. Especially Queen G6 was a strong idea. That's good counterplay for me as well. Talk about a turnaround. I thought, I thought it was, it's Marita Geronimo. I thought it was Margarita. I was like, hey, let's go. But I think you can just tell I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's playing this opening, by the way. This is the most common uh, opening I've seen at like 1600 to 1800 levels. What's going on? Anytime you see a very passive opening like this, 100% take the center. 100% take the center. What's going on here? Interesting. Isn't this like the... Is this the Paul Morphy game? The opera? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Just getting a feeling that it is. You know, that's one thing that... Uh, that's one thing that I think is really like probably very useful, but I could never speak on how useful. 
because I've never done it. I've never <laughs> ever studied old games. If if they happen to appear in a book that I'm reading, like maybe I'll have a, I'll know like a few games, like this one for example. It probably appeared in some book as a kid. But I've mean, never I've never never looked at any any old games. I don't know what... No, yeah, th this looks like a very bad opening. You see how quickly we were able to punish that? Threaten me. Here is actually a double attack. Didn't even prevent it. Easy. So, I always say when you face these sort of like wing gambits, whatever, like side... Anything other than pawns in the center. Just place a pawn in the center yourself. Um, I'm going to play this as if it was e4, so go for a very similar setup. Here. Go b6. But he's setting up uh, he's setting up something here. Let's get castled. Okay. And this looks like a, like a pretty reasonable setup. You know, maybe get our bishop. Okay, got to save our bishop. Bishop back. Building some etiquette today, boys. Okay, we got to stop this. Well, stop it from trapping our bishop. So, in the past, I've almost always used a6 instead of a5, so I may continue with that. Is that a free pawn? Have I lost in this series yet? Oh, buddy. Definitely. Have I lost in this series yet? <laughs> yes. Definitely yes. Attacking my knight. I was wondering if he's going to do this. Um, I think it works for him. I think it works out for him. But um, definitely a strange move. Definitely a strange move. Have I lost in scoring the stash, though? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Someone gifted you a sub while you're sleeping? Uh, well, Pip and Chuck, that's, that's exactly what Twitch has, has come to. Haven't you seen some of the, the recent streams? Uh, the streamers are actually uh, streaming themselves sleeping. So if we can stream ourselves sleeping, we also have to... You know, be able to gift you a sub while you're sleeping. It's only fair. It's only fair. Okay. This is being hit. Uh, can be taken as well. It's quite annoying. Bishop takes e2. Queen takes e2. Queen a4 wins. But bishop takes there. Knight takes first. Could be annoying. Because it's hitting my queen. And then they're going to take back. And I don't want to give up my bishop for that. For no reason. Here we go. That's a joke? Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, I don't know how many uh, of you guys watch, like, a lot of Twitch, whether you just hang out here, whether you just hang out in the chess category, whether you watch a lot of Twitch in general, but um, there are a lot of streamers right now streaming themselves sleeping. So that is definitely not a joke. <laughs> Okay, let's take. 
Hello, Tabernacle. Now, I'm trying to think of what the um, the best way to defend this is. And honestly speaking, it's a pass pawn. I'm inclined to push it. Maybe. B5. Orange Noof. You have a new song? Orange Day 93, thanks for the fresh prime. You have a new one, Noof? I think we could throw it on, man. Damn, I, now I'm excited. Now I'm excited. Okay, knight goes back. My knight's being attacked here. My knight's being attacked here. I have a couple, uh, a couple different things I could do. I could react to that knight getting attacked. Or we could be giving this check, which makes a lot of sense. Because it's a uh, attack on the knight and check on the king. What's the category? Just sleeping? Uh, I think, uh, let me check. Is there a, is there a, a streaming category called sleeping now? Because I swear I saw one. I swear I saw one. Sorry, I'm just opening Twitch. Um, is there a category? Sleeping? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Okay, let's take this. Okay, so uh, he's going to be able to win this back. Don't get discouraged. Remember, we, we took a piece. He's going to take a piece, but I also get a pawn. Not going to complain about that. Not going to complain about that. Let's push these pawns here. Okay. You bring the uh, bring the knight in. Also, uh, pushing this pawn could be the vibe as well. We've talked about knights against bishops and color complexes. Knight g5 is exactly the type of move I'm talking about. Just to give you guys a taste. You know, knight f3, knight h3, queen e4, all about these light squares. He's uh, he's gonna have to save himself here. So we start with a check, and then we'll bring the queen here. And there's a lot of ways to do this. There's a lot of ways to do this, but this, I mean, the, the knight and queen working on these uh, squares here is whoa, that was crazy. I don't know how that happened. Remove um is really really nasty. Like look at his bishop. Doesn't have anything to do. Doesn't have anything to do. And after king h3, hopefully you guys see what I see. But this, this mate occurred, you know, like five moves after I said we were going to try to exploit the light squares. Right? And it's this knight. Getting into these light squares coupled with queen e4. I've been talking about color complexes, knight against bishop and stuff like that. But particularly when your opponent has uh, this pawn structure without a bishop, super, super weak. And if you can ever sink some of your pieces into those squares around the king, you'll often have a uh, potentially lethal checkmate attack. Let's go here. The song's from Orange Noof. Hello, Kilimanjaro. Okay, all we're going to do is bring the knights, bishop, send it. Ah, pawn there. What are we going to do to this guy? What are we going to do to this guy? I'm going to get that bamboo stick out. Take on F7. 
If you start with the queen, it can be defended with queen e7. Uh, you can't pre-move this because he might go there. Buddy guy might go there. Buddy guy. He logs, thanks for the 500 bits. Bad etiquette not to tip the streamer. Thank you, buddy. Take that. Yeah, this is basically like a drone with pieces. Acceptable. Acceptable. Yo, it's quite full, so like... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Get those pieces out. H3. Aha! He's keeping the pin. He's keeping the pin. Annoying lad. Annoying lad. Queen d3, e5. All very decent suggestions. e5, maybe a little bit less so right now. Um, but I think this bishop, you know, wishes it was on f4. For starters, then the rook would also be opened up. A few different reasons. G4, not a movie really want to play, but we can play it. It's just in this position, I don't see that as like being necessary. Put it that way. Um, knight here can be taken. Unfortunately, doesn't work that well. Doesn't work that well. Must bring the knight here. <laughs> Damn, did House Party just get Casey Ingram? <laughs> Come on, Casey Ingram. All right, Queen's being attacked. We got to move that thing. Let's get out of the way. Takes. Okay. Remember, we're not gonna you know take that way for no reason. Trades, we're gonna do left, right, and center. And we're just hoping for Queen F6 for the boys. Yeah, E5 is the idea, right? E5 is a check. On that king, so we get to play this. Yeah, cheers, walking chimney. Yeah, we got some. I, I mean, I'll always say it. We got some nice uh, merch. Bishop finally gets to develop. And what's gonna happen to this guy? He is gonna get mated on g7 for sure. For sure, that must be how the game is gonna end. Now, queen g5. What's the number one thing we want to do? Trade. Am I going to play queen d5? Yes. <laughs> trade, 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 trade. <laughs> that's, that's all we need, guys. In, your, in life, that's all you need. Okay, I can bring the queen back here as well. You guys don't think I'm going to get the mate on g7? Queen g3. Trade, buddy. Trade, buddy. I think he might play queen f7 here. Looks pretty reasonable, right? Rook takes e6 not working. In that position? No, I don't think so. It's just rook takes d6. And yeah, I think I end up down some material there. Hey, we got a trade. We got a trade. We're happy. Anytime you're up material and your opponent's trading with you, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. By the way, Orange Noof, 
I think that was a, a, a vouch on the song. I think people enjoyed it. Good luck mating on G7 now. Challenge accepted. Okay. He wants to uh, bring the knight in, I guess. Start by attacking this thing. I wonder where he's going to go. Arnsight says, Hey, I've been watching you guys for a long time. And thanks to the latest uh, follower, newest follower, Arnsight. Followed one minute ago. Let's go bishop d4. Jeez, Moj wasn't kidding, eh? I can't even... I can't, there's like... Moj did some sort of military pressurizing. I can't even open the water without it spilling. Some sort of military grade operation here. I feel like I'm defusing a bomb or something. Okay, hang on a sec. Uh, let's let's protect. Most importantly, the attack. Here we go. Okay, we're able to. Be able to pry that thing open safely. I think so, Green Shelly Two Step. Not even joking. Like I actually think that if you have a stash, you will climb better. Can we get a rook c8 for the boys? Hello, Dr. Usude. Hello, Doc O. Sparkle, I think my water was exploding on me at the time. Now. In order to truly prosper in this game, we need, we must checkmate on G7. It has to happen. Hmm. It's the only way. G7 is the only square I'm looking at. Mm. Take all my pawns, buddy. I'm only looking at G7. That's all I want in life. That's all I want in life. All right, E4, E5. Orange new for the $10. Dono says, do people want to get aggressive? Uh, I think the answer is yes. We got some aggressive people. I'm going to speak for them. Orange new. Thanks for the 10, Orange new. I think the answer is yes. We got some aggressive uh, lad skis. What's going on here? Am I, am I getting clapped? Have to get G7 made in this game? Oh man, that's going to be hard. You want me to get this guy all the way down here? Bungola CS, thanks for the five months. And would you look at Buddy Pal over here? Would you look at Buddy Pal? F2 mate? You think I'm going to mate this guy on F2 after Queen F6? You think it's that easy? You have su such a low opinion of your your fellow chess.com players? You think he's gonna blunder F2 mate? I 
Thank you, Keylox, for the 500 bucks earlier. Uh, Zetronic, two months. Casey Ingram, sniping, sniping. He got Arnsight as well. Buck81, thanks for the three months. Oh, 300 points in Rapid. But the struggle is real in Blitz. I understand, I understand. Okay, you guys are baiting me, but we're going to play Queen F6. I'm being baited here. This loss is on you guys. Thanks, Joe Owen over the gifted sub as well. Professor David Frost with the prime sub. JC Strikes, two months. Crumpy95 gifting. Soup Bowler gifting. Burgery with the prime sub. And Sean is major. Five gifted subs. Thank you very much, Sean is major. Now I have to go here. No, you guys are trolling me. You guys are trolling me. This is a rough game now. This is a rough game now. Thanks a lot, Buck81, for the resub. Sean is major. Those five subs, man. Appreciate that. Keeping the, uh, the sub number 15k+. plus. We got to stay there. How did he see that? Must be Naroditsky on a speed run. And you know, and that does check out. It's Janiel. Hmm. There's, there's no way. It has to be him. Janiel Naroditsky. Hey, fare thee well. Hey, in a prosto. Classic Janya. H3. Hmm. Annoying guy, eh? Well, how many times has this happened to me in, in this series? A lot. So we're gonna throw our attempt in there. The, the really exciting thing is that... Uh, well, I was hoping he would do that. New York Mike, it was actually because of his habitual H3 move that, well, I'm hoping he gets in trouble here. I am hoping he gets in trouble here. I'm hoping that the habits move ends up costing him. Now, we're in, uh, we're in tough here. We're in tough. I'm going to need a uh, serious move next. Bishop takes H3. Good move. Good move. Bishop takes h6 from him. A good retort. A good retort. That's right, good old Bitesh. You know it. Hey, Snape's continuing the gifts up. Bishop c3. Uh, Ah. <laughs> I just don't even know how to, how to even, I'm trying to think, because sometimes if you say c3, you might be talking about one of these squares, but I don't see a single one. h3, ah, h3. All right, well, you guys want bishop h3, here we go. We're not threatening anything, I'll tell you that, but we're threatening to threaten. Thanks to the 10 orange noof. Oh, and he took here. What now, geniuses? Uh, chat? What was the next move? Long castles. You guys just pretending like we didn't just lose a piece here? You guys aren't trolling me, right? Long castle. Is this the chat's brilliancy being put together right now? What the hell? I can tell you that he's confused, that's for sure. I can tell you that, that he's super confused right now. Okay. Offer draw, okay. Done. Take the juicer. Let's let the etiquette was real. The etiquette was real. 
Okay, so chat's long castle is a horrendous move. And after king h1, a draw was agreed. King h1 is a miss win. And miraculously, after king h1, the evaluation is 0 0.3. So I think a draw is a very reasonable result. Okay. Thanks, c6. Guys, it's the same opening so far. Maybe we're going to repeat. Oh, okay. It doesn't go d4. <laughs> Whoa, this is an act. Guys, what, what do we say? We're going to let, let them bust that nut. We've played this position before, haven't we? Haven't we played this exact position? <laughs> Definitely, Jax. Let's bring the rooks to the middle. And he's hitting us with d4. Reasonable game here. It's true, Petit Moth. They always do. They always do. Casey Ingram, thanks for the gifted sub. And the Hangalos with the Prime. What are we going to do here? I think King H8 is probably reasonable, but... We've already talked about how we're never playing king h8 for the rest of our lives. King h7 only. We learned our lesson. It has to be h7. Okay, he goes here. We take... Our knight has to move and it can't go there. So we're going to put it in the center. Check. Oh, did you look at that? He's capitalizing on my king h7 move. That's annoying. But he doesn't realize that I, I wanted the queen there. This move was just a bait. Just a bait. Caused him to play this. Caused him to play this. Both moves, I think, don't help his position. All because of king h7. Very, very high quality bait. Angelos. Feels good, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Okay, queen b2. Now it's our turn. Now it's our turn. Double rooks on the open file. Good habit. Good habit. Knight getting involved. Eh. I'm too old to think about stuff like that. We're just going to double rooks on the open file. Has to be decent. Um... Queen has to move here. We, we are sort of triple forked at the moment. So let's get this queen out of the way and make sure we stay protecting everything. Hello, Big Buck. Well, that's the problem, Buck. Everyone who's low rated is going to get so good because of habits. They're going to be higher rated. And I'm not going to have anyone to play the sub battle on the bottom boards anymore. <laughs> There's still me, Sag. <laughs> Don't forget about me. Oh, sounds good. Chaw on. Let me add that one up. Here we go. Oh, you got a gig? Let's go, Chaw on. Giggity, giggity. Here we go. Song from Chaw on. And we got another gift and stuff from Casey Ingram. Just nonstop. Casey Ingram. Holy smokes. You need my pieces to get involved here, guys. Let's attack a central pawn. I, I can't be bad. Donnie Tsunami! Thanks for the eight months! 
Followed Habits and placed 28th out of 540 in your first Blitz Arena. You still hung a bunch of pieces overall. Let's go Donny Tsunami. 28th out of 540 is fantastic. That sounds like a higher place than I've ever achieved in Arena Kings. <laughs> It's true, Casey Ingram. You're you're hunting right now. You're hunting. Hey Buck, what rating is this? 1784. It's true, Mr. Mojo. We're gonna take this. And I wonder what uh, what Buddy's gonna do because he is he isn't a pin here. Gregory, <laughs> they'll be on YouTube. Can't speak uh, to when exactly, but they will be on YouTube. Trades are good. Let's go for trades. I know there's another one coming this week. I think that was the plan. Um, don't know if there was one released today. Or I'm not sure what, what the exact schedule is, but I know we got uh, the Twitch VOD collection. So if you can't wait for them to come out on YouTube, if you want to catch up, you can watch uh, on Twitch. Uh, otherwise, they will all eventually get out on YouTube, but over a longer period of time. Bring over the other knight. Yeah, we're going to have to bring this knight over. I wanted to imp first improve the queen. For example, let's triple on this uh, open file. Thanks to Reality Pizzas. Two months. <laughs> bring back Janiel. Yeah, Janiel was good to us. Janiel was good to us. Rook takes knight d4. We have a tricky, tricky opponent here. Like the way, uh, like the way you played that. We're gonna have to move our knight. Gonna have to move our knight. Jacko, I'm sort of hoping to get that in one of my games, but if I don't get Lucina or Philidor in my games before the end of the habits, um, I will probably just explain it myself. Yes, we are man, man. Okay. Just trying to play pawn here. Yeah, I would say Janiel is a very rare name. <laughs> I tend to agree with you there. Nope. Big names haven't, uh, haven't played Kings in the game. Appreciate the two months though, reality. Let's go here. Man Man's coming through with a song. Man Man. Can we get a clean trade, please? Oh, damn it. Damn it. Oh, come on, dude. Agree, Burger. He, he's playing. He's playing very well. Now, move your knight, please. Just move the knight. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate that, buddy. Let's uh, take it. So we can make another queen and hopefully at least secure the draw. Just a nice easy conversion there. Ooh, this is exactly enough. 1819. Let's see.
Now, when we when we see this, I've always told you guys, I think it was maybe one or two levels of habits ago, but I've always said play a6. Play a6. Okay, and after we play a6, obviously we're gonna try to continue with development, but something like e6 and then c5 and build those habits. The Jobava London, yes, very, very frightening opening. You liking the, the porn stash there, Perky? I got a few uh, stash appreciators, you know? Nothing like a, like a good old dirty stash now and again. So we're definitely not going to push. We don't want closed position. So I'm either going to leave it there or I'm going to take it. I'm going to choose to take it here just to see what happens. Thanks for three months, three months. Luau, luau. Can I please tell you how to use time? Use it wisely. Let's go queen takes queen. And now, because we're in an endgame, because we're in an endgame, I'm going to look to keep trading everything in sight. Take her down to the endgame, and who knows? Maybe maybe we'll get uh, an endgame we can learn from here. We do have a, a focus on endgames in level 4 habits, which is why I'm trading queens so much. When should you use your time the most? Well, generally, if you don't need to use your time, you shouldn't use that much time. But if there's a position where you need to use time, then you should use time. Okay, let's uh, continue the trades. Okay, uh, bishops attacked. Let's offer another trade. Never thought of it that way. Yeah, that's like the uh, the South Park uh, dating advice. I forget. I think it's Cartman that gives dating advice to Jimmy about how to talk to girls, and that's what you're supposed to say to anything that females say to you. Well, 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 well I, 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 I never thought of it that way before, but, but, but you're right. Well, well, Susan, I never thought of it that way before, but, but you're right. Makes you seem like a good listener. Well, that is, that is very interesting. Please, please, please tell me more, more. Trades. Trades. Let's activate the night. Let's activate the night. Trades would be good. And this song is from Man Man. Ah, nice move. Nice move from Reverse Blitzer. Nice move from Buddy Guy. Exactly. Knight against Bishop. Knight against Bishop. So, I'm going to play a move that I wouldn't normally play here. But I'm going to play g6 to really accentuate putting all the pawns on the opposite color of the bishop. Let's see if that does anything. He's going to go king here. I think we can get the knight out if that happens. Um, let's continue. f5. Pawns on the opposite color of the bishop. Hey, J. Rebo. Seen a lot more of you lately, buddy. Thanks, Mrs. Duck0011. Two months. 
Okay. Here we go. Piedrith, that is the plan. That is the plan. So I'm, oh man, I really would like to, to trade the rooks to get just the knight and bishop end game. So much you can learn from just the knight and bishop end game. Why did I take with this pawn? Um, taking with the other one uh, would have been just fine. So not for any particular reason. Mostly just to keep all the pawns together. I think that's the simplest way to explain why I took this way instead of that way. I take this way, I got this pawn all by himself over there, so I wanted to keep the pawns all together. Let's uh, bring the king towards the action. Yeah, we're looking to play moves like b5, king c6. We're trying to stay fully on light squares here. Fully on the light squares. My knight only has one square. And oh boy, I'd love to see that move. <laughs> I'd love to see it. What are we going to do? We're going to put our knight on a light square. We're going to play b5, king c6, you know. Light squares, light squares. This pawn is hanging. I'm not in any rush. I'm not in any rush. Staying on light squares. And I mean, again, this pawn is hanging, but. That pawn is going to be hanging for a while. That pawn is going to be hanging for a while. You wanted that pawn? Don't worry. It'll be there. It'll be there for you. And, I mean, basically what he's up to over here is nothing much. <laughs> nothing much. You notice how all my pawns are immune to you know his bishop. I don't have anything to worry about there. I just bring my knight back and keep pushing this pawn all the way home. So I wish the, the rooks were off the board. It'd be a little easier to explain some of those things. Uh, rook belongs behind the pawn, and then we'll be able to, to help push it home. And if, I mean, he can go ahead and take that, but it's like, it's like he's totally forgetting about my pass pawn. This is back to habits, was it, level two? Basically, in the end game, push pass pawns. That's, that's all you need to do. Rooks belong behind. Okay, and this pawn I'm going to put here just to make a point. <laughs> just to put all the pawns from, uh, from his position. Keep them stuck on dark squares. Pass pawns must be pushed. Now, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that he goes and just takes this pawn. It'll be a lot easier for me to win it. Knight b2, king c2 doesn't really, doesn't really go anywhere. My rook is actually stopping his king from... Okay, so I'm going to let his king go ahead and take my pawn. <laughs> it's a, a cruel thing I just did. But I, I really want the, uh, really want the, the knight against bishop. <laughs> but obviously leaving the rook there would be smarter. Would be smarter. All the way. Now, do we play this? Well, first of all, even if you were going to play that, you should never do it while your knight's hanging. Makes sense. And then, should you do it now? No. You should attack that bishop so that it can't stay there, and you're definitely going to get a queen. Don't let him sack his pieces for your pawns if you don't have to. 1800 on the dot. What a beautiful little rating there.
So this game, I think we can like fast forward quite a bit of it because um, I want to actually just show. something like this because um, the knight against bishop was something that I uh, I had going for me in this position. If we actually got this, what I would do is I would probably bring my king up to d5, put my knight on c4, play b5, right? This would be total domination of knight against bishop because he, all of his pawns are, are dark square. Like if he wanted to get some pawns on light squares, you know, those moves would make sense. But you saw the moves he was playing. Even with the rooks on the board, he was playing moves like f4, right? Locking the pawns up on dark squares. That's permanent. f5 and f4 are not moving anywhere. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, if you happen to get a position like this, it's so painful to, um, you know, to play with the... I'm just going to go here just to make a point. It's so painful to play with the bishop because you're going around here and you can't attack, right? You can't attack a single pawn. You can't make a single threat for like pretty much the rest of the game. It's very, it's very tough to play. Very tough to play. Meanwhile, you know, the, the black king can pretty much walk wherever it pleases. Okay, so we've had a few times, either in the middle game or the end game, bishop against knight. Um, I think it's a lot easier to play with the knight than the bishop. When you have the knight, it's very easy. You just put your pawns on the opposite color of the bishop, and the bishop can't do anything. So when you have the bishop, obviously you're looking to do sort of the opposite of that, but it's a lot more challenging to play the bishop side of bishop against knight, which is why I always think that going for the knight uh, against bishop is a good strategy, especially around this, this rating level. As you can see, not many people have like a very clear grasp of the end game. Um, but a lot of these players we've been playing today have a very good grasp of middle game. The middle game has been very impressive. Right? Uh, a lot of players have actually played fantastic middle games. But most of the, the end games that we've seen from anyone 800 or below, 1800 or below, definitely 800 or below, uh, have, been, have been pretty subpar. Have been pretty subpar. So, there you go. It's a good strat, I think. Around you know fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred elo. If you're like if you're putting together a good end game or you have good end game skills, I think you can get a lot of wins. Hey guys, just a reminder that building habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.